Hey guys, I've been working on three automatic tunnel bridge and pathway building flying machines that are all the simplest and most compact I've seen on YouTube. The one I'll be showing you in this video travels through the lava oceans of the nether and creates a two wide basalt bridge with handrails. And it's all self built by this flying machine right here, which is only three blocks tall, four blocks wide, and four blocks long. When the machine is in action, it moves through the lava dragging soul soil and blue ice causing basalt to be formed. It also only travels in one direction, so once the machine crashes, it's pretty much over. So that's pretty much this machine, it drags these two materials through the lava, which causes basalt to be formed and it leaves that behind, creating a bridge that's four blocks wide in total, with two side rails so you can just walk right along it without even falling off. So now we can get to work on building this thing, the first thing we need to look at is the resources you need to make this. So the first row of resources is the exact amount of materials you need to build up the flying machine itself. One optional block I have in the second row is a note block which you could use to launch the machine. And we also have some cobblestone and fire resistance so some other optional stuff. The cobblestone could just be any block that you could use to clear up some of the lava. And fire resistance is just going to be nice since we're going to be working near a lot of lava. So now that you collected all of your materials, we need to find a spot that we actually want the bridge to be built. So once we launch this thing, it will only travel in one direction, so we'll just get one straight bridge and there's no way to really turn it unless you rebuild the flying machine to be oriented that way. So you gotta pick out a nice clear area or wherever the two spots you want to link up. So we're gonna start here and it's gonna end up going this way to whatever it crashes into along this way. So now to get our flying machine built up, what I'm going to do is dig out a space here that's big enough to house the flying machine, and I'm going to dig into the actual surface so it could be out of the way of the lava. So to do that, we're going to go to the side that we want the flying machine to end up launching into, and we're going to dig out a 6 wide space. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And then we need to carry that 6 block wide thing 6 blocks back to where there's a 6 by 6 square all completely out of the lava. So this is what the space should look like, the height of it doesn't matter much yet, but this thing should be 7 blocks back since you want to leave an extra layer of blocks to keep lava from flowing in, and then you want this thing to be 6 blocks wide, so we actually have a 6 block cube in this space just like that. So now take that 6 block cube and you want to dig this down 4 blocks deep. So you want to go to the surface of the lava, and so now digging it down that's 1 block deep, and that's 2. Uh oh. So since we got some lava flowing in, I'm going to use our cobblestone to try to block it up, and it doesn't really look like we're able to, so what I'm going to do is just dig this back further so we could get completely free from the lava. So it pretty much turns out that we got a terrible spot to build this thing, and the reason why I'm keeping this in the video is because this is something that could definitely happen. So if you find a spot like this where there's too much lava and you don't want to have to deal with it, you could pick out a new spot, or another option is to actually make a cube, and this one you're probably going to need fire resistance to go down into the lava to do it. But you're going to want to build a 6x6 block cube, and then you want to hollow it out, similar to what we're doing with the land. It's just that you would build up your own cube, and so we don't actually have to disturb the land at all. And even better yet, you could just build the flying machine in the lava itself. It's just that you're going to 100% need a fire resistance potion to even be dealing with anything like that, but it's still definitely an option. So I really didn't like that area at all, so we're at a brand new spot to try this again. So what we're going to do again is go to the site that we want the flying machine to be launched, dig it out 6 wide, 6 blocks back, and 7 so that way you have a perimeter away from the lava, and I'll show you that all again, and then we could get to work on building it up inside. So now we got our area dug out again, and one thing to point out is that I'm actually digging this 6 blocks back from this point, so that way even at the closest point of lava, if we dig down a 6 block cube, it won't actually leak in at all. So now we could get to work on digging that space out again. So let's look at the surface of the lava, this is layer 0, so now we want to go down 1, 2, 3, and 4. And now just dig out that 4 block deep space all the way inside your 6x6 cube. And this time it was a success, we have a 6x6 square that goes down 4 blocks deep and we don't have any lava pouring in from the walls. So I'm going to be building my flying machine that when we launch it, it will fly in this direction, so I have a big arrow to show that. But now we can actually get to work on building the flying machine inside of here. So get some filler block, it could be cobblestone or slime or anything, and place it right here where you're 2 blocks away on this side and 1 block away from the back. And we're also starting with the very back of the flying machine, which is the side that it's going to be flying away from. So now that we have that filler block, we can place soul soil on top of that, and another one next to it, so that way we have it centered on the 2 block center. Now I'm going to place another filler block on both sides of this, so that way we could place some soul soil on top of it. And now we need one more filler block to go anywhere on either of these spots, that way we could place in two blue ice to create this little eye shape of soul soil and blue ice. 
And so just for a quick recap, that should be one block away from the back wall, one block away from the floor, and then one block away from either the side walls. So now we're going to take our slime to link up all the soul soil. So I'm going to place it off of any of these soul soil blocks, and then I'm going to loop it down like a smile, all the way down on the bottom to create this U shape. And then for the blue ice, you just need to place two off of it, both just connected directly to the blue ice. And now that we have most of the slime in place, we could place down our sticky piston. The first one is going to go in either of the two bottom corners, and that piston is going to be facing frontwards for the flying machine. The next one that we need to place in needs to face the other way, but in order to place that, we're going to place a slime block in front of this piston and one to the side of it. And now we're going to place a piston off of this slime block facing in the opposite direction of our first one. So now we have both our pistons in place. And now I'm going to link up this slime to the blue ice slime. And I'm going to do that by lifting some slime up here and connecting it here. And now all we really have left is just to place in the observers. So we want to have one pointing into this piston and then one pointing into here. So both the faces of those observers should be pointing upwards and the little redstone dot should be pointing directly into the pistons. Now the machine would be able to be launched right now if we placed down a note block in this space, but we don't want to do that yet since we still have a wall that it would just immediately run into. So our next step is pretty much just to open up the garage door of this place and just to tear out this entire wall. And one thing that you really got to be careful of is you got to watch out for the lava and you got to make sure that you dig out this entire place so it's four blocks deep so that we have enough room for the flying machine. Because if this area isn't four blocks deep, the flying machine will actually get stuck to the land and be unable to move. So this part is definitely going to be tricky, so just try your best to get this all dug out. And if the flying machine gets stuck, it's not too big of a deal, and I'll show you how to fix that. So it looks like we actually have a pretty frustrating spot where we're a decent distance out and there's still stuff for it to run into. So this was another not so ideal spot, but I'm just going to work on digging this all out except for one block so I can show you what it looks like when the machine gets jammed and how to fix it. So I'm now going to launch the machine, but I still have some material, so obviously you don't want to do this yourself. You want to just try to get the machine to launch straight out, but I'll show you what happens if it does get stuck. So what we're going to do is place down our note block on the observer face that's still exposed, and that finishes off the flying machine and that gets it launched. But you can see how since we saw some of that debris, it actually got stuck. So what I'm going to do now is go and try to find the source of the problem and tear it out, and as you can see, it's sticking to all this stuff down on the floor. So I just tried my best to remove whatever nether rack was in the way. Another thing to point out is that if your note block catches on fire, it actually can't burn. So it might land on fire, but you actually don't have to worry about it. It's kind of funny though. But now to relaunch the flying machine, now that we've gotten rid of the thing it ran into, all you have to do is click on the note block, which it looks like we have to get rid of this fire to do so. And now that means that we still have some kind of clog in the system that we need to fix. So here's the problem, we still have some stuff stuck to the bottom, so now it should be able to go. So I'm going to launch this thing, and so there it starts to activate. Sometimes it takes a little while to get going, but now you can see it's getting basalt 100% of the time. So that's what the flying machine will do, it will carry on as far as it can, which it looks like it doesn't have too much farther to go until it runs into this clump of nether rack and stuff. But this is what the bridge will do, it will automatically build this basalt bridge. The only other way that this thing could get stuck is if the bottom of it gets stuck to any weird stuff along the floor, but usually you should be okay, this thing has a pretty good clearance, it doesn't run into much. One biome that is an issue though are the basalt delta, since they actually have spikes that rise up in the lava, and it could run to those. But now we get to see the flying machine crash, and so what we could do is remove this stuff, or we could rebuild it to add a turn, or anything else like that. But this is the bridge that it automatically creates for you, and this bridge is really nice. You could just walk along this thing and not even pay attention, you don't have to worry about falling into the lava. But if you do fall into the lava, you had the chance to save yourself by getting back on, which is nice. And this thing that's super cool about these basalt bridges is that they're actually ghast proof. So if a ghast catches you and throws a fireball at this thing, nothing will explode on it. There's another X is one of those blocks that could be destroyed by a ghast explosion, but not this stuff, which is really nice. And one other thing to point out is that ghasts need to have an equal eye level as you in order to shoot fireballs. And since you're right along the surface of the lava, those ghasts should hardly be able to see you unless they're right down there too. So this bridge is actually pretty safe. And I guess some other stuff I'll point out is that if you're in a warped biome, which is this blue biome, the endermen can actually teleport onto this thing and place on blocks. So they could actually kind of get this thing cluttered, but that's going to kind of be a problem with any type of bridge you build in the warped biome, but I thought I would still bring it up. So now you have a flying machine that will automatically build an awesome basalt bridge. If you guys want to check out some of my future videos on this basalt building stuff, I want to make a video on how to build the easiest basalt building pathway ever. It builds a one block pathway with the smallest flying machine you could possibly have. And I also made a machine that builds a tunnel completely underneath the lava. You have a little two block bridge on top, but if you go underneath, 
you have this super cool tunnel with some windows along the side so if you want to check out those videos and this is pretty much the first time i've ever said this on the channel but if you want to catch those future videos i really would appreciate it if you guys subscribe it means a lot so i'm excited to share with you some of the other designs but i hope this one was a big help thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you in the next one bye guys